Hello, and welcome back to another Coulomb's Law problem. Particles of charge Q and 3Q are placed on the x-axis at x is equal to minus 40 and x is equal to 50, respectively. A third particle of charge Q is placed on the x-axis, and the total electric force on this particle is zero. Determine the position of the particle. So I've already gone ahead and drawn the x-axis here, so you just want something straightforward with your zero and the two positions that you've been given. Okay, now I know that Q and 3Q are placed at minus 40 and 50 respectively. When it says respectively, that means whatever I said first here for the charge, whatever I said first for the distance here, those two go together, and the second two go together. So at minus 40, I've got the charge Q. So this is Q, and at positive 50, I have the charge 3Q. Now I've drawn it bigger to illustrate the idea, but Having a bigger charge doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, larger in size. But regardless, this is just for effect. So we can call this one over here Q1. So Q1 has a magnitude of Q. Q2 has a magnitude of 3Q. And we want to know where to put the third charge so that it, you know, it's stationary. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Wherever we put the charge, it's going to feel repelled by this Q2 and this Q1. Now, you know that the electric force is given by kq1 q2 over r squared. So here's the thing. Ask yourself, what if I put it near uh, x is equal to 50, near the big charge? Well, if I put it near the big charge, the kq1 q2, the top's going to be the same, right? It's going to be kq times 3q, but my r is very small. So I'm going to feel an incredible uh, repulsion from this charge right here. I'm going to start moving towards the left. And I'm feeling a weak repulsion from this because I'm so much further away. The idea is this. You want to be closer to the smaller charge because Q here is one third the charge of Q2. So you're, you have to compensate by making the distance shorter so that the repulsive force from here almost, or in this case, equally balances out the repulsive force from this. So I know that my Q3 is going to be somewhere maybe around here, something like this. Okay, it's going to be closer to Q1 than Q2. So I'm going to call this Q3. Okay, and I know that, like I said, the repulsive force from Q2, it's going to go this way. So that's going to be Fe 2 on 3. And I have a repulsive force going to the right from Q1. I'm going to call that Fe 1 on 3. And I know that those two forces have to balance each other out. Now we're told the third particle has charge Q, so I can also say that Q3 is equal to Q. So there, I've pretty much summarized a lot of information there. Okay, so what I know is that I need to set up an equality like this. I need the magnitude of these two electric forces to be equal to each other. So the magnitude of the electric force of 2 on 3 has to equal the magnitude of the electric force of 1 on 3. Okay, so... F2 on 3 is going to be K Q2 Q3 over R2 3 squared, which is equal to K Q1 Q3 over R1 3 squared. Okay, so notice I started putting subscripts and I actually defined a distance here, R2 3 and R1 3. Now, I have to indicate that on the picture here so that, you know, you know what R2 3 is, R1 3 is. So R2 3 is going to be the distance between charge 2 and charge 3, whereas R13 is going to be the distance between charge 1 and charge 3. So this distance right here is going to be R13. Now, because I'm dealing with the x-axis here, I'm going to call R13 x, okay? Now, if that's x, that means the remainder, this distance right here, is going to be the total distance minus this portion, right? This length is equal to the total minus this part. The total is 50 from this side, 40 from that side. The total is 90. So therefore, this distance right here is going to be 90 minus x, and that is going to be R23. Okay? These are going to come in handy after when we start plugging it into our formula. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to cancel out the Q3s and the Ks. And I'm going to be left with 
Q2 over R2, 3 squared. Q1 over R1, 3 squared. Now, Q2 is just 3Q. And R2, 3 is 90 minus X. Now, make sure that gets squared. 90 minus X, close brackets, squared, equals Q1, which is just Q over R1, 3 squared. So Q over X squared. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I didn't scroll that up. Okay, so Q2 is 3Q. Q1 is Q. R13 is x, so it becomes squared. R23 is 90 minus x squared. Okay, so I want to get everything in the numerators here. So if you see, I'm going to cross multiply the x squared to the left numerator, the 90 minus x squared to the right side numerator. Okay. Now, oh, there's one more cancellation I forgot to do. The q's actually cancel as well. So that makes things a lot easier. Okay, so now it's going to become 3x squared equals, so there's a 1 here, so it's just going to be equal to bracket 90 minus x, close bracket squared. So now let's expand the 90 minus x squared. Okay, so we still have 3x squared on this side. 90 minus x squared, it's 90 minus x times 90 minus x. So you do your 90 times 90, which is 8,100. Uh, 90 times negative x, which is negative 90x, minus another 90x is minus 180x. And negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Okay? So let's keep solving that over here. Now look, um, I'm going to drop the brackets on the right, and I've got 8100 minus 180x plus x squared. I've got another x squared on the left here, so I'm going to do 3x squared minus x squared equals 2x squared, and bring the other two terms over to the left as well. Okay? So, all right. So we get 3x squared minus x squared is 2x squared. And then you bring the minus 180x over, it becomes positive 180x. Your positive 8100 moves across and becomes negative 8100. And that's equal to 0. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and factor out the 2, make our job a little easier. 2x squared plus 90x minus 4050. I mean, maybe it didn't simplify things too much, but it's still better than before. So we got to solve for x here, right? I mean, that's going to tell us the answer where on the x-axis this is going to be. So um, we can factor this just by looking at it. So you have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so... I'm about to show you guys something that is going to help you solve the quadratic formula so much more easily, um, but make sure you still know how to do it. Okay, so the way you're going to solve this, grab your calculator. I've got the Casio FX115ES+. Plus. I'm sure a lot of calculators can do this. So on the Casio, what you do, so let me uh, bring it in the light here. You press the mode button. And a bunch of options come up. One is computer, that's what the normal mode you're in by default. Three is stats, five is equation. So I'm gonna click five. Now a whole bunch of different types of expressions come up. Now the expression I want is number three, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So I'm gonna press three, and it's prompting me to enter the value for a. So if you look at our expression, a is gonna be one, b is gonna be 90, and c is gonna be negative 4050. So A, so plug in your values, A is 1, enter, B is 90, enter, C is negative 4050, enter. And then you press enter one more time and it's going to calculate your, your uh, zeros there. So X1 is equal to 32.94 and X2 is equal to negative 122.94. Okay, so now if you want to go back to your usual default mode, press mode again and press 1 to go back to the original computer. Okay, so there you have your zeros. Um, now here's the thing. We know the charge needs to be placed to the right of Q1. Okay, so only the positive solution makes sense here because this would imply that I have to go to the left. And I already determined that the position has to be in between the two, but closer to Q1. So this solution makes sense. Okay, now we get X1 is 32.94. What I'm gonna do is round that to about X1 is about 33. So this means 33 units to the right of Q1. And why is that? Because you see how here where we are where we had Q1, I defined X to be that distance from here 
to charge three. So that means this is my starting reference point. That's my zero. So it's going to be 33 units to the right of where this is. This position is negative 40. 33 to the right of negative 40 gives you negative 7. So x is equal to negative 7. So that's it for the video, guys. Uh, be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. I will see you guys next week, Monday at 12 noon, for my latest video, 153. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to smash that like button so I know what I'm doing makes sense to you guys. And you know how you can stay tuned for my latest videos? By subscribing to Physics in the Flesh. I post every weekday at 12 noon, and this way you guys can always be the first to know when I post a new video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you missed any of my earlier videos, be sure to click over there on the right. You can click and watch those videos on your screen right now. Anyways, guys, Physics in the Flesh out. Woo -woo. Holy crap, my nose looks big on camera.